All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're gonna to be talking about how to install Ubuntu on a Raspberry Pi. And so first off, why would you wanna do this? Why would you wanna install Ubuntu rather than your standard Raspberry Pi OS or previously known as Raspbian? Well, Ubuntu is so much more used in actual industries. And so having a Raspberry Pi with Ubuntu on there and being able to work with the OS and really understand the commands, they're pretty similar overall, but there are a few tools that are not compatible with Raspberry Pi OS that are used with Ubuntu and the other way around. And so by installing Ubuntu on your Raspberry Pi, you can really start to get to use tools that you would use if you worked in an industry. And so for a learning tool, this is awesome. You can get a $39 board and immediately be able to run stuff on Ubuntu without having to configure your computer to do it. And so you can keep those separate. And I think a Raspberry Pi is a really great way to learn how to do things because it really helps teach you how to run commands because I run mine in a headless mode. And then it's also a really safe bet. If you screw up and accidentally destroy your operating system, you just pull out your little SD card and you're immediately able to reinstall a new operating system on there and get back up and running in like two minutes. It's really nice to be able to do this in a very safe environment such as this. And so it's a great tool for that. Another good reason is compatibility with apps. Some apps are written for Ubuntu and so they might not run on Raspbian's Debian instance. Overall, they probably are going to be compatible because they're very similar and they both use the apt-get method for packages. However, there are going to be some things that are written for the network manager for Ubuntu that you might want to start using. I actually really like Ubuntu, and so if I'm ever spinning up a Linux VM for anything I need to do, if it's compatible with Ubuntu, I will always choose it, just because it's what I know and it runs really quick, and the LTS server versions are normally incredibly stable for years. It's just so much easier to configure and start up than really any other operating systems. Then again, it is what I know. Everybody has their own favorite flavor, but I'd say Ubuntu is probably one of the most popular, if not the most popular, Linux distribution for people at home and in industries. All right, so now what are you gonna to need to set this up? Well, first off, you're obviously gonna need a Raspberry Pi, and it's compatible with Raspberry Pi 2, 3, 4, and the new Raspberry Pi 400, which I'm really excited to see one day. I might even try to get one. Then you're also obviously going to need either an SD card or if you're running the new Raspberry Pi 4 and you've got the bootloader that I showed in my previous Raspberry Pi video, you can actually just install it on a flash drive. Then you're gonna need some way to connect it to your computer. And I've got one of these adapters that has the micro SD card, regular SD card, and CF card, which is perfect for me because my camera takes a CF card and it's USB-C. And I'll go ahead and link all these things in the description below in Amazon. All right, and finally, the last thing you're gonna need is a computer with the Raspberry Pi imager on there. They've got versions for every single operating system, and so I'll also leave a link to that in the description below. All right, so now let's go ahead and set this up. First thing you're gonna to need to do is just grab your adapter and plug in your SD card, and plug it into your computer. All right, so as you can see here, I've got this boot folder because it's already been a Raspberry Pi operating system, but I'm just gonna go ahead and open up the imager. And so it's incredibly easy to use. All you have to do is click choose operating system and we can scroll down to all these different options. We're gonna go ahead and open up Ubuntu and it's actually got it to download from the internet. And so there's a bunch of different versions as you can see here. So there's desktop, which we're not gonna be doing. I'm gonna be doing server, which means that there's not going to be a GUI for you, but that's fine because I'm gonna be running this in a headless fashion. Then there's also server down here. And so this is a 32-bit operating system, which is compatible with the 2, 3, 4, and the 400. But we're also gonna to wanna to go down and we're going to be able to install the 64-bit server version because I am running that Raspberry Pi 4. Realistically, we're not gonna see a ton of advantages here using a 64-bit operating system over a 32-bit operating system because I don't have the 8 gigabit 8 Raspberry Pi, but it is still going to help and it's going to allow for future expandability if we choose to. And so we're gonna go ahead and choose that. But if you've got the two, you can only use the 32-bit operating system. It's really not that big of a deal unless you're running eight gigs of RAM because a 32-bit operating system actually has a limit on the amount of RAM any one process can take up, which is two to the 32 or about four gigabytes, which is a really interesting head limit that we've run into. 
With 64-bit, it's somewhere in the exabyte range, and so I don't think you're gonna be running that much RAM anytime soon. And so we're just gonna go ahead and select Ubuntu Server 20.1, which is not the LTS or long-term support version, but we're running this on a Raspberry Pi, and so it's not that big of a deal. If you did wanna make sure that this process was gonna be supported for a very long time for whatever reason, you may as well run LTS, but we may as well get the newest features here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select it and choose the SD card. Just select the one that's in there and click write. And now it's just gonna do everything for us. It's gonna write the operating system on there and it's gonna do it relatively pretty quick. It's only a 0.7 gig file and so it shouldn't take too, too long. All right, so now it's finally gone through and installed the whole thing, and it's verified the installation. So now we're good. It's automatically injected the media, so all we're gonna have to do is plug it into our Raspberry Pi, and you're going to want a wired ethernet connection here. That way we don't have to set up Wi-Fi. You can do it, it's just a bit of a pain, and you probably need a second Raspberry Pi to be able to have a Linux interface, assuming you don't have one ready on available. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and unplug it and stick it into my Raspberry Pi. All right, and so now that it's booted up, we're gonna to have to figure out what the IP address of it is the very first time. And so there are ways to do this using terminal and sending out some commands, but honestly, the easiest thing to do is just go and go ahead and to log into your router. And so I've got a unified Universal Dream Machine Pro, and so I'm just gonna select it. And we're just gonna go in and see what applications are on here. So we're gonna go into clients. And all we have to do is go down and we can check it out right here. Okay, Ubuntu. It is at 10.0.0.24. Really easy, right? So now all we're gonna do is go into terminal. And all I'm gonna do is do SSH Ubuntu at 10.0.0.24. And the first time password is Ubuntu. And so the very first time we connect, is gonna require us to change the password, which is a good security measure. So we're gonna say the current password is Ubuntu and create your new password. All right, and so Ubuntu is interesting. Whenever a password's changed, it kicks you. So now we have to just go ahead and log back in. And I accidentally just typed Ubuntu for the password, not my new password. And so I just typed in my new password there. And just like that, we are back in. And so now we're running Ubuntu instead of Raspbian, which is not an incredibly different operating system, but it allows you to do a lot more things in some cases. I really like Ubuntu across the board, and it's honestly more secure than what you're gonna have when you're running Raspbian, because it is really built for servers and to be able to be accessed from the outside networks. So if you're running things and exposing your Raspberry Pi to the internet, it's not a bad idea to instead install Ubuntu because it does tend to have security patches earlier on. And if you're doing that, I would also recommend installing Ubuntu LTS for long-term support. That way you know you're gonna be able to get the most recent security patches whenever they come up. And so Ubuntu is very similar. It's gonna be a little bit different for people who are not used to it, but overall I really like it. All right, well that's really all there is to it. You've now got Ubuntu Server running on your Raspberry Pi. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below, and have a good one, bye.